Hello, this is the um, third homework this term for Year 11 on the restless earth topic. And uh, here we're going to be looking at what are called conservative plate margins. But I've given the uh, title of this presentation, The Earth's Crust is Unstable, just to emphasise that one of the key points here is that there is always movement within the Earth which is then found and transferred to the crust of the Earth. And uh, this movement can cause the volcanoes and earthquakes uh, that occur at regular intervals around the globe. So how do we know that uh, the, the plates on the crust are moving? Well, we can know by looking. One of the ways we can know is by looking at the fossil record. If we look back at the world uh, as we believe it was hundreds and hundreds of millions of years ago, um, we can look, say, at the southern hemisphere as we've got here with uh, South America, Africa. Uh, we've got uh, Madagascar in here, unmarked there. We've got uh, India, Antarctica, the, the uh, area around the South Pole, and Australia. And uh, you can see that um, their coastlines match up very well, so it's a good clue that they might all fit together. But more conclusively is the fossil record. And the different colour bands here show how one particular species, its fossils are found across many continents, continents which are now split by thousands of miles of ocean. And these species couldn't have um, gone across the oceans, they could have swum, um, they were land-based creatures, or indeed land-based plants in, in this case. And uh, as a result, we can conclude that these land masses must have been connected together. Now, the first homework task I would like you to complete is uh, to briefly describe what this diagram shows you. Just a couple of sentences, and uh, that will do fine. But to, to explain what you can learn from looking at this diagram. Uh, so... Just to recap briefly, we've looked at core, looked at the mantle, we've looked at the crust of the earth, we've looked at how the convection currents have moved the warmth and the heat from that can move the uh, plates around. And uh, we need to remember that the earth, the crust of the earth is really thin. And if it was if the earth was shrunk down to the size of an apple, its crust would be no thicker than the apple's skin itself. So it's uh, a very small part of the whole globe. And uh, obviously these, this is broken up into segments called plates. And uh, you need to remember the two different types of plates, the continental and the oceanic. Um, continental being older, lighter and not able to sink, while the uh, oceanic, uh, younger, heavier and it can sink. And uh, that is a crucial difference when you looked at the um, destructive plate margins. So here is the second task I'd like to complete. Um, if you look at the list of words here in the top box, uh, all key ones um, for this topic, and that's one of the reasons I'm setting you this task to get used to using those keywords. I'd like you to use the words above uh, to write an intelligent two or three paragraphs explaining why plates move. And if you can explain why the plates move, this will help you gain marks in the exam. We'll be moving on to a level two type of answers. Now, uh, unfortunately, when I type this, I forgot one key uh, phrase and one key process um, from uh, the box above. I've got magma, crust, plates, apart, float, boundary, slowly, earthquakes, pressure, volcanoes, and mantle. And uh, I just wonder if you can work out for yourselves which one um, I forgot to put in. The uh, one I forgot to put in if you haven't worked it out, was convection currents. So um, although the instruction there says use the words above to write an intelligent two or three paragraph why plates move, um, I'd also like you to use the phrase convection current as well. OK, and the final task, the, the main one really for this homework, is to draw an annotated diagram of a conservative plate margin, uh, which I'm going to explain uh, in a short while. Conservative plate margins, also sometimes called passive plate margins and basically it's when one slips past the other. So you've looked at two other types of plate margin, destructive and constructive. Destructive also when they're moving together, constructive is when they're moving apart and conservative is when they're sliding past each other. Okay and it's exactly the same instruction as I gave you in the last homework so from my point of view all I've done is um, copied out that instruction, pasted it in here and changed it to conservative plate margin rather than destructive or constructive. And uh, I'll show you a diagram of a conservative plate margin to help you with it. Right, here's a diagram of conservative plate margin and what happens here is quite straightforward. One of the plates will be moving in one direction 
and the other will be moving in another. They're not always 180 degrees apart like this in real life, but they're still moving in different directions. And uh, what this does is, uh, as they try to slide past each other, um, they'll stick for a long period of time. And over time, the pressure will build up and build up. And pressure is the key word here. And when eventually the pressure has to be released, when the pressure buildup is too much for the rocks in that particular place to, uh, to bear that kind of force, that they slip. And they slip, and that is the release of pressure, is the earthquake happening. And then you get another earthquake, maybe millions and millions of years later in that place. Once again, the pressure has moved up over time. You'll also notice that there are no, um, there's no volcanic activity in this area. It is only earthquakes that happen at conservative plate margins. So I'd like you to draw this plate margin as the instruction was I showed you earlier and uh, to make it nice and clear as you did before. Um, you may find an, a diagram that's better than this uh, on the internet um, and again uh, the BBC Bite Size site has uh, some good information on it um, and uh, you'll notice um, they talk about uh, earthquake uh, foci which is the plural of focus um, I'd like you to use that word, another, another word which is not actually on this diagram, which is called epicenter. So you need to include the idea of a focus and an epicenter. An epicenter is spelled E-P-I-C-E-N-T-R-E, -E -E, epicenter. And uh, to include focus and epicenter on your diagram. Okay, right, thank you very much.